Hi, this is the Tropical Tippet for Monday evening, July 8th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, you should consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service offices responsible for your area. We're watching another disturbance in the tropics today, a little bit more unconventional. It's currently over land. Uh, we're watching what has been dubbed Invest 92L, this broad area of rotation that you might be able to make out in the low-level clouds here, centered more over here in uh, central Georgia. This is moving southward over time and will end up over the northeastern Gulf of Mexico sometime tomorrow on Tuesday. And once this gets over water, uh, it is expected to be a threat to develop into a tropical cyclone at some point in the ensuing days. Right now it is not a threat to Georgia, just generating isolated thunderstorms here uh, in the afternoon and evening hours. Other than that, uh, as it gets over water, that's when we'll start to see more convection develop, more thunderstorm activity, and this could become a rainfall problem for areas along the Gulf Coast as heavy rain will likely occur within a uh, hundred miles of the coast or so, at least that's the current expectation. Now there are a lot of things going on with this situation and there is some uncertainty in the forecast. Uh, one of the things we can point out right away is if we switch over to the water vapor imagery, remember our low level disturbance is centered over central Georgia, uh, but what might be a little harder to see on water vapor imagery, it's harder to see as we get later in the day, but there is a, another area of rotation evident here and this is a low level rotation over Alabama. So we have our low level center to the east of that, and these two are not stacked on top of each other. This is going to become quite important during the potential development process because both of these are headed southward. The mid-level one is going to park itself right over the central gulf at some point tomorrow and Wednesday, whereas our low-level center uh, is going to move south a little bit slower and end up to the northeast of that somewhere in here. Now exactly where is going to quickly become important and I'm going to show you why. Uh, one of the reasons that's so is because the GFS and the European models disagree on how this happens and that results in a totally different evolution of this storm. Uh, the GFS, for example, uh, 850 millibar vorticity showing low-level spin in color here, valid Tuesday morning, that would be 8 a.m. tomorrow, uh, shows that our system is centered uh, still inland here, uh, over southwestern Georgia and focused mostly on the northern side. Now the broader area of rotation is sort of more like this if I were to circle all of it and the GFS is focusing the vorticity more on the northern side and by the time we get to Wednesday morning this moves southwest and we end up with a focused area of spin off of Destin and that's within this larger cyclonic gyre here. So you can see the GFS is northern focused. If we compare that to the European model, we have something on Wednesday morning that is focused much farther south over the Gulf of Mexico. The reason this matters is because if we look at the position of the 500 millibar or mid-level uh, center of spin, in this case on the GFS for Wednesday morning, you can see that it's down here over the central Gulf as I outlined. That's uh, this thing here coming south and parking itself right there. So you can see that on the GFS and if we compare that to the position of the low level spin up by the Florida Panhandle you can see that they're pretty offset. This would be the mid-level, this would be the low level. Whereas on the European model this is still offset from the mid-level center but they're not quite as far apart and this will matter because if they're closer together if there's a lot of convection going on in this area as there should be it's easier for the two to stack on top of each other which is necessary for this to really start spinning up and getting strong which is indeed what happens on the European model this continues west-southwest and the two become virtually stacked uh, by Thursday and then this continues on west-northwest and strengthens considerably this is very different from the GFS which since it is northern weighted has a much less stacked look uh, around the same time. This is for early Friday on the GFS. The surface low is here in red. The mid-level is shown in the wind barbs here uh, showing the mid-level center to the southwest. It's about in the same spot as the European but the surface center is farther north because again on the GFS this surface center took a journey from Georgia much farther toward the north on its way here whereas on the European this surface center took a much different path a little bit farther south and was able to stack with the mid-level center and this is all tied into what's going on tomorrow morning and during the day on Tuesday and this can give us a little bit of a clue as to which one of these solutions might be a little closer to the truth if we look at the GFS uh, flow field for tomorrow morning this is the surface flow just above the surface uh, we can see our area of broad rotation centered in here just ignore that L there it's, it's really more this area here with a center 
uh, over the central Florida panhandle. Now the question is where does this broad weak circulation start to tighten up, get a little smaller, get a little stronger. Uh, again the GFS tightens it up here. The European tightens it up here. Uh, if I had to pick one of these solutions I would lean more in the direction of amplification along the southern edge of this broad circulation because we have this very uh, moist fetch of boundary layer air coming across the Gulf of Mexico from the west and converging near the Tampa area and so we're, we're kind of expecting a lot of convection to be going on in this oval here tomorrow morning and during the day on Tuesday and theoretically this should be able to start amplifying vorticity in this part of the broad scale rotation. Uh, it remains to be seen whether or not there will also be enough convection up near the Florida Panhandle to tighten this region up. So the GFS and the European do disagree on this, uh, but if I had to lean one way, it would be toward the convection down here being dominant. Now we'll have to see. Uh, there's no way to guarantee one way or the other how this is going to evolve. So we'll see tomorrow. The good news is we'll get some questions answered during the day Tuesday. But again, the end result of this is that the GFS tracks the surface low farther north does not stack with the mid-level low, uh, in fact, ever during the course of the system's lifetime. And so this is a weak system moving toward the Texas and Louisiana coastlines, whereas on the European model, this is much more stacked, where here we have the surface low in the red L, and the color here in yellow indicates the mid-level center. You can see they're on top of each other. This is a necessary condition for a storm to strengthen uh, substantially, and that's what we have on the European is a stronger storm moving toward the Texas-Louisiana Gulf Coast. And so this is going to be important for the future strength of 92L. And it's also going to be important for the track here, because again, with the GFS a little bit farther north, it's going to bring it closer to some steering features uh, over the continental United States. If we take a look at the uh, steering features on Thursday morning from the European Ensemble of 500 millibars, we'll see that this is our area of uh, disturbed weather with 92L would be centered somewhere in here. We have a big steering ridge out over the Rockies like this. And uh, in some scenarios, this can bring the system west if it gets uh, underneath the nose of this ridge. We also have a ridge east of Florida uh, that has southerly flow across Florida trying to push the system toward the north, so there's competing steering there. And modulating the flow in between the two is this shortwave trough over the Great Lakes, which is diving down and trying to weaken the nose of this ridge out over the central uh, part of the country. So these competing influences are, as they normally are, uh, difficult to model perfectly, and there is some uncertainty here, especially with regard to where the system is. Again, with the GFS farther north, if you imagine the system unstacked, so the mid-level, we can assume the mid-level low will be somewhere in here, but if the lower level center is somewhere in here, then it's going to be more likely uh, to be impacted by not only the shortwave trough, uh, to the north because the ridge is weaker here, but also the front that will be diving down into the central part of the country associated with this trough. And we can see this better on the prior graphic I had from the GFS. This is showing mid-level moisture on early Friday morning and you can see this front right in here. This is going to be important for the low level steering flow because you can have flow like this behind the front, flow like this out ahead of the front in the lower levels. And again, this is the low level center. So if the low level center is farther north, closer to Louisiana here, it's going to be more likely to get tugged by that front toward the north and northeast quicker than if the system is farther to the south, in which case it would be more likely to sneak underneath the nose of this ridge in the mid levels. And again, a stack system is deeper and would feel the mid level flow more, less likely to get tugged north, more likely to go more toward the west-northwest toward Texas. Um, so it, it depends a lot here on where the low-level center is. Is it down here following the mid-level center and thus the mid-level flow? Or is it offset to the north, weaker, and thus more susceptible to this front coming down and dragging it on shore at a more eastern longitude? So there is uncertainty here, and models have not yet come into tight agreement on how this is going to evolve. We have models that have landfall in Texas, models that bring this into Louisiana, models that still bring it into the central Gulf Coast as far east as the Florida Panhandle in some cases. So there's no way to pin this down just yet, but we'll know more tomorrow and Wednesday when we start to see which one of those pathways uh, the initial vortex takes. Remember, the GFS is farther north, the European is farther south. We will at least know the answer to that question within a day or two, and that will hopefully answer some of the longer-term questions as well. 
So we can't answer all the questions yet, but what we do know is going to happen is things are going to get a bit wetter in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, regardless of what track this thing takes, it will likely rake moisture across the Gulf Coast in some areas as this whole thing meanders around down here. This is showing the rainfall forecast from WPC through Saturday evening, and you can see this large area of rainfall encompassing the Gulf starting here first and then spreading westward with time as the system begins to meander. Now, fortunately, uh, there is going to be some northerly shear imparted on the system, which is going to keep most of this rainfall on the southern half of the system. That's why you don't see it extending uh, inland extensively, and we have this kind of confined to the Gulf Coast region, but it may overlap the coast here, and so we are going to be watching for some flooding concerns. Um, but we can see from the upper level wind forecast from the GFS, this is uh, th Tuesday evening, our system would be in here somewhere, there's northerly flow aloft at 200, and that's just showing that this will likely push some of the convection off toward the southern side more than the northern side, so that may be relatively dry, and again that's why you see not extensive inland rainfall, but again, could overlap the coast. So we're going to be watching for heavy rain. That'll be the primary concern over the coming days. If the system happens to uh, become vertically stacked like we talked about and get stronger, then maybe we'll have to talk about some wind threats near the point of landfall as well. But we don't have the answers to those questions yet, but it's in the cards, so we'll watch for it. Uh, so right now, it's kind of a wait and see what this does tomorrow as it gets out over the water. We've discussed some of the possibilities. We'll have more answers probably around Wednesday. Uh, but for now, keep tuned to the National Hurricane Center forecast and the local National Weather Service forecast for your area for the latest on potential impacts from rainfall and other things, high surf, that sort of thing as this disturbance gets out over the water and starts to strengthen. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.